Okay, so here we're looking at a cross section through a pine stem, and we're going to try to draw the entire radius section here. So we're going to start with the pith in one corner and epidermis in the other. And then we'll have the respective layers in between. Um, so the pith is that ground tissue and we're going to have rays that connect the pith all the way out to the cortex. So here's my epidermis, here's my periderm, and then we have a ton of cortex, and then my um, vascular cambium, And so vascular cambium um, to cortex, it's going to be phloem. And then the major difference here, actually let me label these layers real quick. Phloem, cortex, periderm. Inside here we're going to have our wood which is going to be the same thing as our xylem. And then that stripe is our vascular cambium. And then again, this is our xylem ray inside the xylem. And then our phloem ray inside the phloem. And we'll have those large open cells again for the parenchyma that make up the cortex and more parenchyma cells that make up our pith and then all of the cells inside our rays are also parenchyma cells. So lots of ground tissue everywhere. One of the major differences that you'll notice here compared to the um, eudicot plants that we've seen so far, the tilia, is that the wood is very orderly and organized. Um, and so that is due to the fact that these cells are all tracheids. We don't have a single vessel element anywhere in this image. Um, vessel elements were later to arrive on the scene, evolutionary speaking, so they just don't exist at this point um, during the development of the pine clay. We do have tracheids, however, and everything else, all those other tissues are the same. We're even going to have early tracheids, which are nice and open and large, that transitions into smaller and smaller tracheids as we get further and further in the growing season and it becomes drier out and then winter hits. So we have that same pattern that we've seen before. And in this image, we have one, two, three, four years of growth, probably. So we're going to have early wood. And we're going to have late wood. So that we have a growth ring. One other thing that I want to mention here, the xylem that actually touches the pith, that's all going to be 
primary xylem. So that would have been produced by the apical meristem. And then all of the other xylem that you see, that is going to be secondary xylem. So most of what you're seeing is secondary xylem. And in this case, because we only have tracheids, we have secondary tracheids making most of the body of the trunk. Okay, there's one more feature that I would like to point out, and that is the um, resin ducts. The resin ducts you'll see kind of sporadically placed in the plant, and the resin ducts are the location where the plant um, stores its resin. I kind of think about this as sort of like the um, ducks and humans that help to fight against infection. Um, so that's these ducks um, release resin, which is a sticky substance, and it, if you, you can kind of imagine um, maybe biting on the stem and that resin just flooding your mouth, it's sticky, um, you get stuck in it, and in fact, if you have amber, um, that is resin from a long time ago, and sometimes you'll still see insects trapped inside. So that brings us to the end of our drawing, I believe, uh, with that last feature of the resin ducts.